Africa, the home of Nigerian footballers. And today I have a special guest with me. Please introduce yourself to our viewers. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm Dixon Mwakeke, man. Ex professional football player. <laughs> Yes, I was just going to, I was going to give you a little bit, you know, added to it, you know, for anybody that doesn't know uh, what I'm He's an ex-football player, recently retired, so, you know, not not that ex. Um, he's also, you know, the elder brother of Anthony Wakeme, who is the current footballer for Champions League and also in Nigeria. Um, he's going to be discussing with us today, you know, about his football journey and telling us about some of his ex hasn't shared before, you know, try to give us the pictures behind the scenes and inside his football career and you know, some events that happen in this. So thanks, thank you once again for joining me. It's my pleasure. Always a pleasure to support a good cause. Why not? Thank you. Just um, start with your background. I just said you are the other brother of Anthony White. Um, and yeah. you know, the brother is, is popular. You are, you are popular. You guys are even more like false heroes in Nigeria, where you grew up from. So can you tell us a little bit about your, your background and your upbringing? Yeah, growing up, we were born and raised in Nigeria, in Lagos. We, if you're Nigerian, if you're from Lagos, you should know Ajibule. It is it's very rough down there. You don't get it easy. So it's the ghetto, ghetto, ghetto. So life was difficult, you know, going up from a jegule. But many people like looking the easier way around, like how to help themselves through wrong means. But for me and my family, mostly with the help of our mom, she was always like, there is no easy way out. You have to work hard to come out from here. And why not do it in the clean way instead of doing everything others are doing? So why not be different and stuff? So we like we stick to that, and with the help of God, we came out from Ajegule. You know, not many made it out from there. We have very good talented players in Ajegule, but only few. And God wants to bless my family, not just one, but too so we're grateful to god god has been so so good to us so so faithful even when we are not faithful to him so all thanks to god and to our mom as well she played a very big role in our lives and um i just want to say like um i've heard different men that were um, born and raised in the particular you know they always <laughs> So, you know, do you think it's just simply God's grace that out of that bunch you know, that helped you to do it? So. Yeah, it is God's grace, and also, like I said, our mom played a very big role. Number one is God's grace, number two, I think our mom, our upbringing. Our upbringing is quite different. You have to go to church. You have to follow the things of the Lord. When you go in astray, she will wake you up 5 a.m. in the morning and start advising you. You'll be like, my son, this is not the way you have it. Only the ways of the Lord. She will be like, ah, poor man picking, they know something. I beg, my son don't go like this way. This is the right way to follow. So it's God's grace and purely our mom. She's an angel. And you know, big shout out and kudos to mom for keeping you on yeah. the right path. Because obviously yeah. now everything, everything has worked out for the back then, you know, she couldn't mm. have, have the details. She just wanted to be yeah. going in the right direction. <laughs> Yeah. That's, that's interesting to know. You know, and my next question is um, you know, still mm -hmm. about your, your family, you know. Um, mm -hmm. You playing football, your younger brother playing football. Mm -hmm. Did you feel any pressure to succeed from football? Or did you feel like if football didn't work out, that's another thing that maybe you could fall back on? 
I I didn't feel any pressure. I was just playing really because I love football. I have passion for football. Back then, it's not this lucrative to play football. Even my mom, my siblings, they are all like, what are you doing? I have two elder brothers that we are very good in football. Like me and my younger brother, we can't even match them. But they have to give it up because life was difficult. Went to trading, went to serve, master, how they call it. So there was no pressure on my side. I knew, I don't know how, but I knew I was going to make it in football. I have this confidence. Not like this big, I just know I'm going to survive with football because I love football with everything. So whenever I'm playing football, I don't even think if we are poor, if we have not eaten, if what will be the next meal, I'm just happy playing. So it was pure love and passion and no fear whatsoever. I wasn't thinking, ah, what if it doesn't work? I don't know how to do anything else apart from maybe table tennis, video game and stuff, like learning trade and stuff. I don't know nothing, only football. So I didn't have like second or backup plan. It was just only football. Yeah, the love and the passion I have for it. So I didn't care if I was going to fail or not. I just want to play. And when did you finally get you know, that moment that happened you know, in your career, in your life, that it started to look like, okay, like, this football for real for real i think it's for my school days school days secondary school days primary school i was good captain secondary school days also and street games like nowadays we have a lot of street tournaments this street played against that street and stuff competition everywhere and there whenever i play People dash me money a lot, like, you are so good, like, you're going to make it. So it's a good sign for me. You see my socks back then. I used to chuck money inside while playing. It's just like musician or whoever performing yeah, like and they are spraying you. Money. So it was, the sign was there for me. I'm not going to lie. I was like, yes. But I didn't know where it's going to come from. You know, Nigeria, if you don't have Godfather, if you don't have support, trust me, it's really difficult. But I was just optimistic. And what was your first, you know, um, your first professional experience? You know, when did you mm. finally get that break in professional football? Uh, yeah, if I start to tell my story, it's too long. So I'll try my best to cut it short. Maybe I should write a book about the story. We went to, there is this guy, he came all the way from Senegal to look for players to take out. He's a Nigerian guy. So he lived there, he knows their football and stuff. So he came to us, he said he have offer for us. There is this guy from Abidjan, he's going to take us to Morocco. But we have to play one friendly game first in Togo to know if we're good enough or stuff like that. So we went to Togo, we contributed money, we went to Togo, they beat us like four nil. So this agent, he ran away like, <laughs> we, didn't see, we didn't see his break light anymore. So we were stuck in Togo, we were 10 in numbers. Yeah, we didn't even have goalkeeper, they gave us goalkeeper. So the goalkeeper is even the man of the match. We all shit, trust me. So we were young. I was 16, 17. We played against league team, league side. This is the biggest experience we've had. So we couldn't do anything, like no chance. So we were 10 in numbers. Five of four said they are going back to Nigeria. Then another five. The guy told us about Senegal because I told you he's coming from Senegal. So yeah. he told us about Senegal that we have chance, we can play for the league there and stuff. 
So the other five of us say, why going back? We have been in Nigeria for how many years? Nothing is coming out. You don't have Godfather. You don't have anybody to push you. Why not go and try? So we summon courage. We have to call our parents, our family to send money so we can go by road because we went to Togo by road. And by road to Senegal, it's, it's very far. It's long journey. We had to stop in Mali and pause. Even going back to get money from the family, my family don't have. My mom, she was, I told you she's, she's an angel. She was going everywhere to get loan, but nobody is giving her this loan. One of my best friends, he came from, the family is rich, considered at regular level that time. They are rich, they are doing so well. So. He went back also like he don't want to take that risk. But me, I don't have anybody. I have to. I have to. So he went back. The money they were supposed to use for him, my mom pleaded the mom to give her that money, to loan her the money. She said, no, they don't have to loan and stuff like that. My friend was crying and pleading her mom to give my mom the money because she took my mom to her mom to beg for that money he was pleading so the mom refused so i don't know what she does how she does it she always have one last money where she will tie it somewhere or i don't know so they she just rallied around and gave me that money so i went we went we stopped at mali mali for two days after we continue the journey, it's almost like one week journey for us to Senegal. So oh, that's how we start. Oh. Yeah, one week to Senegal. Journey, road trip. So we stopped at Mali for a while. We even trained there for one day. Then we continued the journey. So getting to Senegal, we went to clubs. They like us, they like one or two of us. The biggest club in Senegal then, they called it Giraffe. After they said they don't have money, one of the uh, officials squandered their money. They can't keep us and stuff. So we had to stay in Senegal like that, training with Nigeria team. We start begging people on the street like normal beggars, please. We can't even understand their language. So we use sign, please, food. Some they give you some like what are you saying? I don't know. Once a year. We slept outside for some time. So finally, there is a Nigerian who is moving to a bigger house. He knew that guy that brought us to Senegal. So he gave us the place. And before the place we expire, luckily for us, they have this tournament in Senegal, Norway Town. It's even bigger than the league then. But if you are a league player, you are not allowed to play. It's like street and regional something. So we happened to play for one team near Italy. I was playing there, three of us. So first game, they were not even playing me. They were playing the other guy, tall striker. We went there together. One of the reasons they have this their fetish stuff, water and stuff, asked us to bait with it and stuff. We said, no, we are Christians. We cannot. They said, even Christians do it. I'm like, no, me, I cannot. Even the guys, all of us will refuse. So they were like, OK, we'll try only one person. First game, second game, they tried that guy. He wasn't doing well. He was even falling on the pitch. Training, I was doing very good. I was playing midfield, number 10, then. Role model, JJ Okocha. So, so third game, they were like, okay, they will put me on the bench. That guy, they are not putting him anymore. So we went to the game. I was on the bench. They were leading 2-0. Second half, three minutes to go. This man didn't even want to put me. So three minutes to go, he just said, hey, go and play striker. He's going to remove striker. I should play striker. I'm not a striker, but I didn't complain. I was just happy. I'm it's going to game. enter that pitch. Yeah. The game was so massive. The crowd there, they love that game so much. So I entered. As I was about to enter, they scored. So we have to pass 3-0. And now as the guy, 
up front with me, pass the ball to me. Then two man, more you say more to pass with two yeah. players. Well, yeah. So I said forward. pass to me. Yeah, I said pass to me. The guy passed the ball to me. From that place, Okochan, I beat all the players like one, two, three. Getting to the post, it was synthetic. I didn't know how the ball managed to go behind me. Before you know it, after I lost that ball, pim, 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 game over. The supporters started insulting the coach. You have player like this, and you kept him on the bench, and we are losing. They insulted his life. Next game, midfield, I said, go and play striker. Before you know it, I scored. Second half, we enter again, I scored. We won 4-0. Since that day, I'm the number one striker on top of the town. Oh, wow. So, I'm more popular in Senegal than in Nigeria. They know yeah. me more in Senegal than in Nigeria. To date, they were like, this guy is better than Alash Duf. No joke. Back then, wow. Yeah, back then. Even Alash Duf was their top, top. They said yeah. you are better than Alash Duf, what we saw at your age and stuff. If you come, let us bath you that our water. Give you what you style. You will go far. I tell them no. If God no fear help me, leave it like that. <laughs> no be a water. Many days, yeah. Many days in Senegal, we we'll do fasting. Then when we are sleeping outside and stuff, we we'll do fa I will do fasting. Let me not say we. So I will do fasting. Time to breakfast. No money to eat. It continues. So it was difficult. You trying to play football, it's not going to be easy. So I became talk of the town. I won the best player. We won the regional, interstate, everything we won. So I was everywhere in Senegal, all newspaper, like agents coming from Europe to see me. Sometimes they have to even give me money to go so I can see them. So I had this guy coming from Pama, Koulibaly, S Senegal International with long hair. His brother was in Pama. They wanted me there. This white guy came from Norway. Then there is this man, Papa Samba. He was the one who took Taribo and Joseph Yobo to France. He was the one who took Alash Duf out. He's a Senegalese. So he said he's going to take me to Bastia. And if you are playing in Senegal, every Senegalese get player dream is to play in France. So we jumped on that immediately. Ah, Bastia, yes, I want to go. So on getting to the airport, I saw my ticket. It's for Dubai. Yeah. It's for Dubai. So I didn't want to go, but they persuaded me, you are young, just go one, two season, take the money, come back and go to Europe. So I went there. After the trials, I was good. They wanted to keep me. So they gave him 20,000 euro then, if I'm not mistaken, to bring my clearance. He went for three months, he didn't show up. So the club was tired. They had to, they even sacked two of their strikers to take me and one striker from Iran. So they had just that guy from Iran. So they waited for three months, he's not showing up. They had to send me back to Nigeria. That's how I went back to Nigeria. After that, I went to Belgium. I was injured, my waist, I couldn't move, I couldn't play anymore. So, so let me ask you, let me ask you. So that time when you went back to Nigeria, did you consider yeah. maybe going back to Senegal? Um not really, but I had contacts from Senegal. So they took me to Belgium. Okay. But we were training in Lagos back then. Then I hurt my waist. So going there, it was El Chalroy. One Nigeria Joseph Akbala was playing there. So I was there. It was winter. The cold, my waist, it's even blocked. Like I can't move anymore. So I had to be sleeping straight. So I suffered that for how many months and so. So after that, I went to Angola and played in Angola. I was champion for the first time in the club history who won the league. So after that, Angola, that's when I went to Nigeria under 23. Then after that, it was Finland, and that's how I didn't look back anymore. Wow. 
amazing. So I, I want to ask yeah. you know because you said you were you mm. were playing in Nigeria, you were supposed to go for this trial, and then all of a sudden you know things didn't happen. You still decided to go mm. to Mali and Ghana to Senegal, and then you become mm. the top of the down. Yeah. Yeah. You know it's just amazing. Like, because this is something I always tell um, footballers and people like everybody's yeah. path is 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 different. You know, like, mm. It's a different. Mm. Because mm. at the end of the day, you know, you can never tell if you never yeah. make a decision to go to, to mm. Senegal. You don't yeah. know if it would have taken off for you in in Lagos. Mm -hmm. you know? Because you said mm. you even became more popular in, in Senegal mm. than you even were in your own in your own country. So it's my just, own country, yeah. It's, it's, it's just interesting. and it's funny because that tournament was just three months or so. It was funny. How I like boom. And you so it was for really years funny. back in Nigeria. It, yeah, and a midfielder. So that's how I turned to a striker. Even to date, I don't consider myself a natural striker. I even to date when I play, when I pass the ball or assist to like, is this a striker passing ball like this? Like you don't see that. It's it's difficult to see, trust me. Not many strikers can pass the ball like that. So it's because I'm a natural midfielder. Yeah. That's 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 very that's very interesting to hear. 